さあ皆さんこんにちは改造車ジャーナリスト土井パフォーマンスです今回はサンディエゴに本社があるこちら HRE パフォーマンスオイルズこちらの中を詳しくお伝えしたいと思いますお楽しみに早速社長が案内してくれるみたいです So in this room we have a lot of、uh, it's kind of like a timeline history of our wheels and so you can see here some of the modular cast wheels that we did back in the 1980s So these are similar to what we would have imported from Hayashi Racing back then. And then moving to the 90s, we started doing forge centers, but still three piece. So this 540, when I started back in 1999, this was our best selling wheel. And actually, we brought this wheel back recently. Sato actually urged us to bring this wheel back. And now it's one of our best sellers. It was the hardest wheel we made back then, took the longest time. Now it's the easiest and least expensive. 2006, Atri decided to make one piece forged wheels. And so back then, I don't know if you remember, but everything was deep, deep, deep lip. And we decided to do the opposite and make one piece forged wheels that were more European and had no lip. This wheel here, the P40, ended up being a huge seller for us and、uh, really captured the Porsche aftermarket. Before, When we were doing mostly three piece, we were really big with BMW and Corvette,、uh, but Porsche was a customer, but not huge. Today, Porsche is our most popular customer.、So. Um, this is a project we did back in 2009 with Dimag.、Uh, we had our center and we bought Dimag barrels that lasted about less than a year.、Um, but this was our first step into carbon fiber rims. 2012, we wanted, we started to get a lot of requests for vintage styles, kind of like from the 80s, but more in modern sizes and diameters and things. And so we brought back our vintage.、Um, and still, this is actually one of our most popular wheels. In fact, we, we're creating a new version for carbon because we're getting so many requests for this style in carbon. 2013 was when we decided to make, go back to making a cast wheel, but What was interesting about this was we wanted to make sure that it had、uh, a flow form barrel. Instead of casting this, you, you squeeze it. What that does, it makes it a lot stronger. The only place we could get this done was Japan. So these are made in Japan. 2014 P101. This is just some of our forged.、Uh, this is when we started getting into doing some more complex surfacing. This is our R101 lightweight, which this is an interesting example. If you see these cuts on an HRE like this, They look decorative, but if you understand、um, engineering, beam theory, when you're bending a beam like this, the top is in tension, the bottom's in compression, and the middle really doesn't have a lot of stress. And so when you look at a building structure or something, it'll have an I beam, what's called an I beam, it's a capital I. And that's for bending, because in high performance wheels, when you're going around a corner, you're pulling a lot of G's, you're bending the spokes. So it's a very efficient structure. It's a good way to. Keep the strength, but get rid of the excess mass to get rid of weight. This is our classic series. So, just like when we brought back the vintage from the 80s, we started getting requests to bring back styles from the 90s, but make them modern, make them for modern sizes. This is one of our most popular wheels. And so, the classic series. This is the first generation of a special project we were doing with、uh, GE Additive.、Um, this is a 3D printed titanium wheel. Um, it was a, it's a concept, but if you look at it, you can see it's absolutely crazy. The spokes pass through each other, and you, when you're doing 3D printing, you can do a lot that you can't do with machining.、Um, this isn't something we were trying to take to market.、Uh, we are still working on a different 3D printing program, but this was our first example of an RED project we did to learn what was available, what we could do. And where we could go with it. So, this is an example of our FMR barrel. So, for years, HRE, our modular wheels were three piece, and the rims are spun, but they're not CNC machined, they're just spun. And so, they end up being a little bit thicker where we don't need them to be thick, and thinner where we need them to be thick. So, they're a little inefficient. And it's the same technology that's been around since the 80s and really hasn't changed very much. So, we wanted to have our own modular barrel that was more precise, more like our one piece forged. 
And so we have this rim made exclusively for us. And it really starts as a one piece forging, just like a one piece forged wheel, but the center gets cut out and we fully CNC turn. This design is our design made proprietary just for us and allows us to have the look of a three piece but something that's a lot more precise, just like a one piece wheel. And so you end up being a little bit heavier than a one piece because of the fasteners and things, but uh, not as much as three piece and it runs truer, stronger and lighter. So we're really proud of this. This is our latest, this is our carbon barrel. Unlike in 2009, that was a Dimag. We were just buying the barrel from Dimag and a lot of people are doing that today. This carbon barrel uh, is made exclusively for us. It's not made here, it is made in the UK. Um, but we approach some people who are carbon fiber experts and we're wheel experts. So we specified the geometry, we asked for certain materials, we asked for certain requirements, and we worked with them to develop this part exclusively for us. Uh, we're extremely happy with it. Um, it's been passing all the testing with flying colors and doing very, very well. So, and this wall here is just a, some example of some of the wheels we do for some projects. Um, this is a Goomford Apollo wheel. This is the first uh, Remac Concept One wheel. Um, this is the, I don't know if you guys remember the little Google self-driving car, the little white bubble. That was this, that was this wheel. And anybody who's a Fast and Furious fan, we're, we're in most of the Fast and Furious movies. This was on the Fast 9 car, and obviously the, the wheel we have out in the shop is for the Fast 10. So this is the second generation of the 3D printed titanium wheel. And you can see the complexity, the spokes are hollow, they pass through each other. Definitely stuff that you can do that you can't do with normal machining. When we're defining wheels, we have all of the wheel specifications in the computer, but we also have to figure out what's going on the vehicle, going on with the vehicle. So we need to know the vehicle specifications. And so one of the ways we do that is we'll, we scan the vehicle. So Dave can show you how we, he's gonna scan a wheel, which isn't the same as scanning the vehicle, but then we'll show you what, what that looks like in the end. And so that allows us to have the digital model of the brakes and the hubs and the wheel well and everything so that we know what we're working with when it comes to creating a fitment for a different vehicle. This is actually extremely time consuming to do this process because all those little pixels yeah. got to get put into, turned into a solid model. It's a, it's absolute nightmare. It takes, the, it, he's got a really, really powerful computer and it takes him forever to get this thing fully digitized, so. We're not just taking a solid and cutting simple chunks out of it. We're actually doing what's called surface modeling where we're taking a very a curve and creating a surface from that curve and then projecting another curve onto that surface, creating very complex splines. And we stitch those all together into a watertight, and that creates the style. And it's a little bit different than normal solid modeling. It's more complex, but it gives us a lot more control over the design. It takes a lot longer. It's a lot harder. Uh, it makes machining a lot harder, uh, but it gives us more design freedom. And then, after we start with the initial concept on the design, we're going to have to analyze it for strength and stiffness and weight. We're going to simulate different loads, laboratory tests, fatigue tests, and we're going to basically flex the wheel. But we'll do that in the computer first to see where the wheel's strong, where it's weak, to make sure uh, we know whether we have to add more mass or take some out or move stiffness here or there or whatever. And so we do all of this before we ever cut a prototype. And what's nice about it at HRE is the guys who are designing the wheels are also the guys that are running the engineering. And so we don't take a design and then send it to the engineers, the engineers ruin it. So they don't ruin the design. They keep, they know what they're, how to keep it beautiful because wheels need to be strong and light, but they also need to be beautiful, right? So, so this is the beginning of our manufacturing. This is our machine shop. Uh, we have kind of, two different paths. So for our one, uh, three piece and two piece, the centers, the forged centers, they start in those four machines over there, which are lathes. And then they're gonna come over to these mills where we're gonna do the center machining. For one piece, it's a little bit different. So for our one piece wheels, after it goes through the four lathes there, then they're, they're gonna come, but they're still solid. So there's still, there's no design. And so what we're gonna do is then, they're gonna, we're gonna load them into this. There's five different mills right here. These are big horizontal mills. So 
unlike those mills, those mills cut this way. These mills cut sideways. And so they'll cut the style and it has a fourth axis. So it'll rotate around and it'll cut the back and it'll turn at an angle and it'll cut the valve temple. So these machines can cut the wheel completely. And there's a robot that will take them and it'll store them. And what's neat about it is we have a barcode. We'll barcode the work order and the computers know what to cut, different style. Every two wheels is different. The fronts and rears are different, different style, different diameter, different size, everything's different. And then as the a wheel is done, the robot will take the completed wheel out and it'll put it somewhere and then it'll grab another one and it'll reload it. So these five mills can run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They just run and they can run forever. And well, unless they need maintenance or something, but they can run lights out. Normally that's done for things where you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. But every two wheels for us is different and we've had to build in the flexibility to, to have that work. If we load this up on Friday night, we come in on Monday morning, then it's, there's a whole bunch of wheels that are done. 24時間、7日間、365日、違うデザイン、違うオフセット、全部この機械でできるみたいです。だからもう工場止めないでずっと生産し続けることが可能みたいです。すごい。20メートルぐらいあるんじゃないでしょうか。This is a good example of the difference. You know, this is one of our classics. This takes us maybe 20 minutes to cut this. This is much more complicated, right? So this probably takes three to four hours to mill. One of our prototypes for the new L1 luxury series took 22 hours, almost almost a whole day to, me, to mill. <laughs> so this looks like a simple surface, but this is actually very complex. This takes a long time to machine this. This is not a simple cut. The way the finishing works is stone brush and polish have a different uh, treatment to the metal. Stone goes through these tumblers here and then it will go to powder coat and get a clear coat on it. Hand brush, the guys are gonna hand brush it. So the more complex the design, if it takes four hours to machine, it's gonna take them two to three hours to hand brush each one as well. And then if it's gonna go full polish, it goes through the first set of tumblers, a second set of tumblers, and then a final ceramic ball media, and this will take it to a high polish. Interesting story on this, when we first got these machines, it didn't work. To get this process to work, we had to get a different ceramic. It actually came from Japan. This is actually a Japanese ceramic. <laughs> so this is where they're gonna do the hand brush, right? So all the brushing is done by hand. And when they finish it, it'll get clean and then powder coated. Before, before powder coat, obviously, we have to get rid of all of the residue from prep and polishing and all of that. So we're going to go through multiple different cleaning steps and then a final wipe down by hand before uh, it goes to powder. So we'll do colors in that booth and we do clear coat in this booth. And then, so we'll shoot the different colors and then we cure them in the different ovens. Uh, the curing is actually really important because powder coat, normal temperature for powder coat cure is too high uh, for forged aluminum. And so we cure at a lower temperature to make sure we don't hurt the aluminum. And so a lot of people don't realize that. And so that's why we do it ourselves to make sure that we don't damage the aluminum. Powder coat so this is assembly and touch up for our two piece and three piece. The fasteners we use is a company called ARP. ARP is a racing fastener company for Formula One and IndyCar and Dragster and stuff. So they make a high strength stainless steel fastener. Uh, it's very nice. It doesn't fatigue, doesn't rust. Uh, basically lasts forever. Um, 
for carbon, it's different. We want to reduce the weight, so we use a high strength titanium fastener for carbon. So these are not decorative. These have to hold the wheel together. And so they need to be super strong and have no corrosion or anything like that. So uh, extremely expensive, but they work. But it's like, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. So. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, some of the things that makes an HRE wheel special, the customer can't see. It's on the back or it's on the inside, right? So, in this case, the HRE is a very good person to go to the store. I think it's a very good person to go to the store. I think it's a very good person to go to the store. 聞かないとわからない細かいこだわりなんかもいろいろ伝わったんじゃないかなと思いますで今回 HRA オープンハウスでいろんな新しいホイールもデビューしましたんでよりいろんな車に似合うホイールがラインナップ増えたんじゃないかなと思いますぜひ HRA のホイールのご用命はボンドグループ各店にお伝えくださいというわけで各種 SNS フォローもよろしくお願いします最後までご視聴ありがとうございました